Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry option. And uh, in this video, we're going to be focusing just on the flow chart of the Solvay process. It's important that you're able to represent this flow of the Solvay process in a flow chart similar to the one that I've included here. Um, it's, it's a requirement both of the course, but also um, it's a good summary tool to help you identify the main things that are going on here. So um, a few things that this flowchart should be able to tell us. And I've just left everything on the one slide today so we can try and pull out all the key things. So firstly, we have here our raw materials. So the flowchart identifies brine and lime, uh, limestone as our two raw materials. Now the limestone key component is calcium carbonate, so that's coming in. And the brine is uh, sodium chloride and water. So keep those in mind as we, as we go through. So the first thing we need to do is basically heat up the limestone. So we heat this. It's a thermal decomposition reaction. And the thermal decomposition reaction gives us calcium oxide as a product and carbon dioxide. Now the carbon dioxide is recycled through the process, so that's fine. We're not going to have too much of a problem with the um, implications of the addition of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Um, but let's just have a look at the um, pathway followed by the calcium oxide at the moment. Uh, the slaker actually um, uh, is going to add water effectively to the uh, calcium oxide and turn it into calcium hydroxide or lime water. Um, and that's going to go into an area called the ammonia recovery. So I'm just going to leave a little asterisk and come back to that because we need to follow. You can see there's other things coming through here. So I'm going to go back up to our second raw material, which is our brine. Now, this um, section here requires the addition of ammonia. And we talked in the other one about ammonia being one of the important um, uh, raw materials, even though ammonia you can see is actually going to um, continually to be um, cycled through this particular process. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the fact that we have an ammonium sat uh, ammonia saturator and what that does is it um, breaks down our um, sodium chloride um, and uh, through the addition of um, carbon dioxide, which has come from the thermal decomposition of our, our limestone, uh, we have a, a, a basically a saturated solution um, of ammonia and brine, which we feed into our carbonator and along with carbon dioxide, and we get these two very important products down here, our sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate and our ammonium chloride. So these are the products of this reaction up here. So these two things coming in, our brine and our ammonia and our carbon dioxide, and these are our products coming out. Now we actually need to separate these two and we separate them on the basis of their uh, differential solubilities as we cool them down. Um, what we do is we precipitate out the um, ammonium chloride and we push the um, sodium bicarbonate through. Now there's a second um, uh, thermal decomposition step here. So there is another heating uh, decomposition step which actually occurs in here, which actually ends up um, resulting in the ammonium bicarbonate becoming, uh, sodium bicarbonate becoming um, sodium carbonate. So this over here, sodium carbonate, is our goal. It's our desired product. And if we have a look at the other um, substance that comes through from the um, process of the addition of the brine and the ammonia, um, which is the ammonium chloride, then the ammonium chloride is actually going to come back in. It's going to um, uh, combine with the lime water, the calcium calcium hydroxide, which we originally sourced from the uh, limestone itself, 
And what that's going to do is it's going to give us, again, two products, one of which is ammonia, which is going to feed into the system and continue to recycle, uh, and one which is our waste product. Uh, and this is the calcium chloride. Now, calcium chloride is useful in small quantities, but not in large quantities, um, and so often has to be disposed of. It can, it's used for um, places where there's a lot of ice, or where it's very, very cold and it snows in the winter, um, for icing paths and roads and things like that, but that's not a big problem in Australia. So, um, so therefore, it tends to be more of a, a product that's just a, a waste that has to be disposed of, buried, uh, or thrown to the sea, that sort of thing. This is quite a complex flowchart, but it's very important that you're able to use something similar. If it's not identical, it doesn't matter, but it should identify the raw materials, um, the waste product, the desired product, the recycling of materials, and you can see CO2 is recycled, ammonia is recycled. Um, through this particular process, and also just a brief identification of the processes that are occurring in each place. So I've done a lot of scribbling all over this. Um, there's lots and lots of different um, images in your textbook, on the internet, of flowcharts that represent the Solvay process, and it's just important that you can reproduce one and use it to explain this process. On subsequent videos, we'll go through it in a little bit more detail, but hopefully that's a good intro just for now. Thanks for watching.